What's up, freaking world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland on this channel, Stay Fresh Productions. We talk about everything dealing with fragrances. Any interest in that kind of content, welcome to the right place. Hit that subscribe button. Join the Fresh Squad today. Increase, elevate, evolve, enhance, and improve your freshness. And your freshness is you bringing your best self into every situation, treating people with respect and understanding, carrying yourself with class and elegance. And we use fragrance as at least a starting point of that. You'll feel it and others will smell it. Now today we have a very special topic. This was actually suggested by a member of the Fresh Squad by the name of Matt Active. At least that's his handle. So Matt, I want to thank you for suggesting this and a comment on a pretty recent video. And I just decided to run with it. I kind of took some time to formulate my ideas on this topic. I think it's a very interesting one. So I think we are in for a very interesting little video here. We're talking about assigning fragrances to personality types slash lifestyles. I'm kind of combining the two in this particular video. I was a little bit daunted by it at first, but once I started to flesh out my ideas, it started to make sense. It started to come together and I kind of decided what I wanted to say and what I wanted to share with you. Now, a couple things to get out of the way. Number one, I'm not a psychologist. I like to think of myself as simply an observant human. Number two, these are complete generalizations, total generalizations, and this is not all encompassing. This is not a comprehensive survey of any kind. This is just me trying to boil this idea down into three digestible components that hopefully you will relate to in some way, either with one of them or maybe with all of them. The third thing, most importantly, is that these are just my opinions in terms of these personality types and lifestyles, how I'm describing them. I'm only describing them based on what I've observed in my life. Same goes with the fragrances that I'm pairing with them and those reasons why I'm pairing the fragrances with them, simply my opinion. So don't take this too seriously but hopefully you do find it somewhat informative and at the very least entertaining. So let's dive right into it. All right, so our first group, I'm calling this outgoing, outgoing people, also known as extroverts. Now, I have some pretty distinct characteristics I'm gonna name off here that describe or generally describe these types of people and the lives that they live. They are naturally social. They like to turn strangers into friends. They might spend more time out of the house than they do at home by choice. They work around a lot of people on a daily basis. They're often spontaneous. Typically, they could be emotional decision makers. Doesn't mean they make bad decisions, but their emotions might run high. They are often energized by interaction, which is a characteristic of extroverted people in general. They're usually conscious of their appearance and they do like nice things. A lot of them love the sun in the summertime. And I'm using a tagline to kind of encompass all the characteristics I just named, as well as the fragrances that will fall under this category. And the tagline for outgoing is, we'll get your attention whether you like it or not. For each category, I'm gonna have three fragrances, a fragrance aimed for the men, a fragrance aimed for the women, and a unisex offering. And the fragrances that I am matching to the outgoing category are going to be on the louder side of things. They're also going to be on the brighter and maybe fresher side of things. There's something fun and lively and again, loud and unmistakable and indisputable and undeniable about these fragrances. They make themselves known. You see them when they walk in, you smell them when they walk in, of course, and they will generally get the attention of everyone and will generally be appealing. The first pick we're going with for the men, this is Amouage Beach Hut Man and whew, this is a fragrance that not everyone loves, I would say, if we're just talking about people's taste with fragrance, but I do think it is one that can suit this personality. It is very fresh, it is strong, it is green, but it's also welcoming. It's like a giant smile. It's like eye contact and a smile and a handshake all in a bottle here. Very fresh and green, minty, kind of earthy, very woody, but has a subtle sweet resinous quality and intensely powerful. We're talking a 15 plus hour fragrance, no problem. Beach Hut Man, total stunner, definitely for outgoing people, definitely an extroverted fragrance, especially for men. I don't typically like to assign genders for fragrances, but for this video, for clarity's sake, we're doing that. So for the guys, I got you with Beach Hut Man from Amouage. Okay, for those extroverted ladies, the ones that like to make a statement, the ones that are bright, 
and bubbly with their personality. They like to greet people. They like to meet new people. They like to be pleasant and they like to get attention. We got to talk about Mansara Sicily. This is a gorgeous, fruity, citrusy floral fragrance. It's sweet with things like peach in there. There's yellow florals, perhaps like ylang ylang and a range of other florals. Lots of citruses, which do bring a bit of a bitter sweetness. And it is juicy and it is mouthwatering and it is powerful. It is such a delightful fragrance. It will make people's eyes light up when they smell it, perhaps similar to your personality. Again, if you like to be around people, if you like to have positive energy emanating around you and from your being, then Mansara Sicily is definitely a great choice. It will match that energy you like to put out into the world. Mansara Sicily. And we needed a unisex offering here. This is one that guys and ladies can wear. It does have a richness to it, perhaps more than the other two, but still quite bright. And even summery, we're talking about Coco Moon from Beach Giza. And this is beautiful, sweet, juicy pineapple with smooth, sweet, creamy vanilla and sandalwood, some warm benzoin in there. Coconut, it smells like a tropical vacation, but with a lot of richness to it. Such a delightful scent definitely will put a smile on your face and those around you. And again, loud, unapologetic center of attention by choice. That is Coco Moon from Beach Giza. Okay, let's talk about our second category of personality slash lifestyle, and I'm calling it reserved. Again, just generalizing, we can call them ambiverts, maybe with more introverted tendency. Ambivert meaning they do have characteristics of being both outgoing and perhaps a little bit more conservative and reserved in their energy and their output. And this is how I describe them. They are typically careful and particular about making new friends. They hate small talk and they often prefer deep conversations or none at all. They seldom initiate interactions with strangers unless it feels authentic, but they can be highly and topically social at the cost of their limited energy when necessary. They can be the center of attention even when they don't want to be. They tend to have disciplined and regimented routines, yet they can also be very creative and artistic. They're usually quite conscious about their appearance and they may also like nice things. They tend to work well with others, but they do just fine and sometimes better when they're working alone. They appreciate the sun, but they love the transition seasons. That's where they come to life. And the tagline I'm using for this entire category is versatile and attractive depth with limits. These fragrances on the surface are very appealing, very attractive. Most anyone will smell them and find them pleasant. Like, hmm, yeah, that smells nice, but they're not loud. They're not gonna grab you. They're not gonna grab you by your collar and shake you. They're not gonna scream as they walk through the door. They are, as per the name, a little bit reserved, but with presence. But as you get to know them, as they sit for a while, there's depth here. There is complexity to these fragrances because these people, on the surface, they can be present. They can be in the moment. They can interact with you on a topical level if needed. But if you really get a chance to know them, they are going to have a lot more depth. But again, appealing to most people. So therefore, they need some kind of versatility to them. They can function in most places, but there's a lot more than meets the eye. And our pick for the men, this is coming from Nishane, a lovely fragrance. On the surface, kind of smells like a typical fougere, an aromatic fougere, having a aromatic fresh quality having a woodiness having a spice having a sweet creaminess smelling of cleanliness but there's more than meets the eye here this is well more than meets the nose i should say we're talking about b612 and again it is a fougere you have some of the usual components like your lavender and geranium bringing a fresh open aromatic quality a cooling quality you do have woods in here you do have a creamy sweetness a softness in here that does kind of yield a cleanliness, but it's a little different here. You don't have spice. You typically see spice in fougeres, but you don't really have a spicing component here. It's a much smoother, rounder experience. You also have the addition of cypress, which brings this very interesting green woody depth to the scent when you first spray it on. Cashmirin is at the heart of this scent, which is a synthetic material. It is intended to smell something like warm, woody, cozy, 
Ness. It's like a cashmere sweater, so to speak, kind of wrapping you up. So there's an interesting warmth here, which again brings quite a bit of a depth. It will last on the skin. You can wear it anywhere. It's a versatile fragrance. Again, lasts on the skin, but it's not going to push off. It's not going to jump off the skin. But if people get close, if they get to know you, they'll see that, okay, this is not just a nice smelling fragrance. There's a lot more here. That's B612 from Nishane. For the ladies, a fragrance that I do believe in the air smells simply pleasant, simply beautiful, a little bit unusual, but not completely off the wall. But there is depth here. There's something different going on. We're talking about Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme. Some people would consider this unisex. Honestly, I agree. I would wear it myself. This is Blackberry. There's a sharp green woody quality in here that creates a dryness to the scent but it is kind of dark and juicy and fruity by way of that blackberry there's a lot of rose in here as well there's a bit of a freshness here it comes off as a fruity floral in the air but as you get closer to it there's a darkness and a richness and a depth here as per the category but i do think it is quite versatile again not the strongest performing scent it will be noticed it will be present when you meet people they will like it but you give it time you give it close proximity and you're going to notice that this is more than just the fruity floral really beautiful stuff gucci guilty absolute parfum okay our unisex offering from the house of m mika left spiritual again first spray or even first whiff very pleasant very attractive kind of beautiful, even a little bit sexy, honestly. But there's more here. You primarily get a soft, kind of creamy, almost vanilla-like jasmine with a bit of a brightness to it. Got some bergamot, pink pepper kind of accenting things, but it's mostly kind of thick and creamy and sweet, almost gourmand leaning, but not quite. But there is a warmth here. There's a musky warmth that starts to show itself after a few hours coming from the ambergris. And it's that ambergris that really transformed this fragrance from being kind of typical into something a little bit extraordinary. It's simply beautiful. There's so much depth here, especially as it sits on the skin. So again, it does have a freshness to it. It has a sweetness to it. It has a balance of both, which makes it quite versatile. It's not super playful. It is a little bit more on the elegant side, but again, there's a sexy quality, but there is some beautiful depth in here as it dries on the skin. I think it perfectly suits the more reserved person. Again, not terribly strong, will last on the skin. It's gonna leave a nice soft sillage trail, but it is not going to grab people by the neck and tell them that you're here. So if you're looking for a beautiful, interesting profile to match your personality, and your lifestyle, check out Spiritual from M. Mika Leff. I'm gonna have links to everything down below. One more category. As you may have guessed, our last category is, yes, going to be more on the completely introverted side of things, but I'm calling it reclusive, which might sound a little extreme, so I don't mean to offend anyone, but just again, for generalities, that's what we're using. So this person is generally as follows. They prefer to operate from home, outside of the necessities like getting food or fresh air. They usually feel more safe and secure at home alone. They might have a remote job, so they might prefer to do work from home so they don't have to interact with people. They might have very, very few close friends, people that they actually trust and actually know things about them. They are perfectly content without socializing and might even have some anxiety surrounding it, especially when it comes to strangers. They may not be the most conscious around appearance and they don't really care about stuff. They're not the most materialistic people. The winter time, the cold gloomy days is when they might feel most alive. They like to challenge their minds with puzzles and reading and any other cognitive task. One thing I do wanna mention, these characteristics are not exclusive to these categories. There's gonna be overlap here. So again, not meant to be taken as concrete information. They might have a strong and a polarizing personality, so they're not gonna be liked by everyone. And the tagline I'm using to describe this entire category is often misunderstood, yet brilliant when truly known. So let's dive into these fragrances. This first one here, For the Guys, this is a staple for me when it comes to fragrances that are not going to be appealing to everyone but if you really wear them correctly, they are unmistakable and they are unforgettable. And this is one of them. This is Gucci Guilty Absolute Poron, the counterpart to the women's version. This is dry, 
leathery, earthy, woody, just authority in a bottle here. No sweetness here, not much freshness here, nothing truly appealing on the surface. But again, when worn correctly, can really make you feel more grounded and can make you more memorable to people. But this is also a fragrance that you could wear just by yourself at home for yourself. You may not care what other people think and that's fine. So this is one that you can totally get away with within your four walls and you won't offend anyone. But if you do wear it out and you wear it dressed up with confidence, treating people with respect as we say about freshness, I think it's gonna suit you well. Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour All. All right, I wanna spray this one to remind myself of this opening, but this is for the ladies. And this is a rose fragrance that is not going to be for everyone. It's a little bit unusual. It might even be, again, a little bit off-putting to some, but this is coming from Panouge. This is called Rose Agathe. Wow, this is beautiful. When you really smell into it, you can't help but just like wonder, like, man, how does it smell like this? This to me smells like a metallic rose, but with a this is weird, but a bloodiness to it. I think there's rose oxide in here, which can often come off smelling like metal, which can smell a little bit like blood. There is this blood-like quality to the rose, but it is mostly metallic. It is kind of bitter, not much sweetness here. It actually is a little bit fresh, but this is like green, bitter, metallic rose. I think it's supposed to depict a rose growing out of the concrete in like a metropolitan city. Again, not the most approachable rose fragrance. A little bit polarizing, but when you get to know it, it is unlike anything you've smelled before. It is a brilliant scent. Definitely recommend this one. If you're looking for something completely different when it comes to rose, Rose Agathe from Panouge. And for the unisex offering, the last one here, this stuff can easily be misunderstood. This is a weird, scent this is unusual to say the least wow so different this is coming from neanderthal and this is called them simply called them and i don't remember all the notes in here but i know carrot seed slash orris plays a major role here so you get this kind of smooth waxy slightly powdery slightly creamy starchy quality to the scent but something that almost does smell reminiscent to carrots. That might sound so strange, but it does not smell like fresh carrots, but you'll get what I mean when you smell it. It is a very introspective scent. This is something that you kind of would wear for yourself. I do think it's unusual nature, ironically enough, makes it quite versatile. You could wear this just about anywhere as a signature scent, as long as you don't spray too much. It is on the stronger side of things. Actually, same with Rose I got that is also pretty powerful. Again, not gonna be liked by everyone, will simply come off as weird to a lot of people, but when you let it sit on the skin, it doesn't change all that much, but it just kind of congeals into something so beautifully different, which I do think matches this type of person who wants to be understood, but is not gonna go out of the way to do so, may even push people out, but when the right people come along and they see them for who they are, they're really appreciated, they are really respected, and again, understood. That is Neanderthal, them. Okay, that is the video. I just really wanted to do something different here. I'm trying to infuse newness into my content and ultimately into the fragrance reviewing space. That's a whole nother topic. I'm not gonna go into that in terms of my thoughts on the current state of the reviewing community, but it is what it is. So I really hope you enjoyed this. I would love, 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 love to know what you think of this topic. Let me know down in the comments your ideas on this topic of combining fragrances to people. Again, in a very general way, perhaps this could be expanded. This was a lot of work to put together, so we'll see if I do it again, but a lot of that will depend on what you think. So if you like the video, please like the video. Again, links to all the fragrances will be down below, so check them out if you're interested, and please consider elevating your freshness by joining the Fresh Squad. As simple as clicking that subscribe button, and it costs you absolutely nothing. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.